Hello, this is the weekend preview show brought to you by Vertical Football. I am your host, Afele, and with me, I have here with me, Diolu and Shegun. How was up, guys? Ah, it's good to be here. Yeah, good it's to be good here. to be here. I'm looking forward to the preview. Uh, like we like we all know, the Premiership has been the league full of surprises. Uh, game week seven was a one shocking one for us. So, how did you guys see the last game week in the Premiership? How are you, how are you not this year? Yeah, yeah, there were shock, shocking results, as you said, the likes of uh, Man City against Wolves. Shocking result. Nobody expected that. Also, you had a game of uh, contentions, issues, VR issues in the Tottenham versus um, Liverpool game. Also, some kind of expected results in the sense of Manchester United against Crystal Palace. Yes, then yeah. also very happy for Chelsea Football Club that they got a much needed win against um, Fulham. So, it was really, really a mixture of um, emotions. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just fans that are all over the moon right now because yeah, that yeah, win yeah. was yeah. like, they needed it much. And yeah. what, seems, what do you think about that? Yeah, it was a weekend full of goals for me. So, like, like you said, expected games, the Manchester United and um, the others. But the, uh, sh- the shocking games for me are the um, Man City, the Man City game and I don't. I just feel like most goals were so much goals than the. Okay, that's all right. So we'll go straight into preventing the uh, game week eight that's coming up on Saturday. So the first game we have on Saturday is Luton versus Tottenham. Yeah, Luton versus Tottenham is taking will be taken with Old at twelve thirty uh, at Kennyworth Road, and and their last five meetings. Or out of five missions, they played four draws and one win, which Tottenham won. Uh, what do you think about that match? You know, Tottenham uh, Luton coming to the Premiership as is having a tough time on the road. So, what do you think about Tottenham uh, Luton in the first place? Uh, Luton, I'm uh, very happy that they got one win, and that's their form one win out of the uh, life. I didn't expect they would even get a win at all. No. I feel I have I've said it many times here with all due respect to Luton that among the New boys, the likes of Luton, Burnley, and Sheffield United. I think they are really the the least among these three clubs. But uh, they keep they keep they have to keep pushing. Even when their game against um, Burnley versus Luton, they postponed match. Yeah. They lost that game two goals to one. So they still have to keep pushing. And I think for in this match again, you just another match that will just come and go by. I don't think they're going to get anything serious from. From no. that game. Right. So, what do you think about Tottenham also? Because Tottenham, like, down the form of their lives right now, you know, on beating in the league, the only thing on beating in the league. So, what do you think about Tottenham? Yeah, also? yeah, surprising. I think when Tottenham played the uh, first few games, the game against Manchester United, the games against Brentford, yeah. I came to a point where I said, now we're going to know if Tottenham is uh, really, really, really ready, you know, for the Premier League. That's going going into their two games against the big sides yeah. in terms of Arsenal and Liverpool. And surprisingly, they won Liverpool and they drew against Arsenal in a game where I felt if they had a lot of more composure, they should have won that game. So I'm really, really impressed with what Ange Posteko is doing at Tottenham. And I think um, off of what we have seen so far, I think they're going to be a top four, a top four side and go to the Champions League with the manager. Okay. Um, so, um, Diolu, what do you think about the match uh, about Tot- uh, Luton and Tottenham respectively? Luton, Luton Town hasn't been in the great, the greatest one. Like they just came from the, they came in the Premiership not with a good form okay. because just a win in like five matches or so, more than five matches. So it's not a good form for them. Then Tottenham, well, they they've got their games right and making sense for them. Great form, great composure, everything about them is just good so far. I'm beating in the league, so. We 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 should expect nothing much from Luton Town in this game. Mm, okay, you should expect nothing much from Luton Town. But don't you guys think that there might be a surprise that day? I don't think it's going to be a surprise. Nah, I think Luton, surprise. the quality of Luton is too low to surprise. Yeah, <laughs> too low. To and again, when you want to surprise, you can surprise against maybe an an Everton. You can surprise maybe against maybe you know a Burnley. You surprise maybe against a Sheffield United, but this Tottenham team, it's not just a team that is grinding out results. It's a team that is playing well and winning. Yeah. Okay. So that means for you to make a surprise, that means Luton has to be very, very good and Tottenham has to be very, very, very bad. So I, I will go for, if I was to go to for, go into predictions, I will go for my own case. I'll go for a 4 0 win, a way win for that's Luton 0, um, Tottenham 4. Wow. Do you know? What do you do? I would go for I would go for three zero. 
three zero uh, four zero second. and three zero. Yeah. Well, that's okay. But for me, I'll go for as you say, three one. I see Luton just at least. Luton scores over. Scores over. Luton. Okay, so we have four matches uh, on Saturday that will be playing by three o'clock. So the first one we're going to preview is Burnley uh, versus Chelsea at Turf Moor. On Turf Moor. So what do you think about Burnley coming into the Premiership this uh, uh, this season? What do you think about their season so far? I think the, the, the question we always asked about Burnley was: Is this a company going to kick? St- keep that style of play that he had in the championship and off of the few games we've watched them play in the Premier League we saw that he's a manager that sticks to his principles he's a manager that has belief in the way of play and so he has stuck with that and definitely they've lost some games uh they won their last game in the Premier League against um as we said earlier against Luton so it's a team that is sticking with their principles so the question is, is that they don't have the quality you know we said it many times that like, can they strengthen their squad the way the likes of Nottingham Forest strengthen their squad yeah. only has not done done that so even if they have the right and the positive um, way of way of um, play they don't have the players that can operate on it on a very high level but they are they are trying their best they are pushing and I expect them to to try and survive the Premier League if they if they keep going that way. Uh, that's okay. So, Dilly, what do you think about Chelsea winning their last match against Fulham to uh, nil? What do you think about Chelsea's form? It was a brilliant form for them. They had they had um, a great game against Fulham. Like I saw the highlight and all that. They had a brilliant brilliant game. So, um, against Burnley, it would be a tough one for them. Mm-hmm. To be a tough one because Burnley having uh, having to win. Just two games, the previous forms and Chelsea also. So it's going to be a hard one for them. Okay. All right. So going back their head to head, the last five meetings between Bowling and Chelsea, the, um, it's just one draw between them and Chelsea has won the last four, the last oh, five friendships. So okay. going the, but judging by that, what do you predict the match, the match would be? I, I, I will predict the Chelsea win because I think uh, Chelsea won against Brighton in the uh, Carabao Cup. Yeah. Chelsea won against Fulham in the Premier League. So I think it's just good because Chelsea is going to go through tough run of matches in the month of October. Mm. So um, I think it's just nice that they pick up points against Burnley. I think Burnley, you don't even need to play so much good against Burnley to pick up points at this moment. So I'll go for a Chelsea win. I'll go for, I think Burnley will score. So I'll go for a Chelsea three, Burnley one. That's Burnley, Burnley one. Since Burnley is at home, yeah. Burnley one, Chelsea three. Oh, okay, that's great. What do you think? What's your yeah, I see, I see a draw for Chelsea. Okay. I see a draw. It's going to be a tough one for them, like I said earlier. So I see a draw, and I see a one-one draw for Chelsea against Burnley. Okay, oh. that's great. One-one draw. Yeah. Wow, well, one-one draw. Like that match is a really hard one to predict. So, I let's see. I'll go for a draw too, but I go for a draw. One one also. I'll okay. go with you. Nah, no red Chelsea, have you? No, it's not like red Chelsea. It's just, it's just that Burnley is at, firstly they are home, and I feel like they need a win. So bad, but they won. They won their last match tonight. I know Luton. against Luton. They won. That's against Luton. Who, who, who can't beat Luton? Who knows if beat Luton inside uh, the Luton Luton free gift. So you understand. So it's just that they will like they need a win, and if they can get a win against a top tier team like Chelsea, it should be like a boost for them, like a morale booster. So you understand. So I feel like they're gonna give it their all. So the next match uh, playing at three o'clock on Saturday it was Everton versus Bournemouth uh, at Goodison Park. Um, Everton, Everton is, you know, showing that they can still, you know, but they really, really, really made me laugh on the last, on their last fixture against Luton, Luton beating them. That was the first, the Luton first win at Grizzly Park also, Luton beating them at home, two to one goal. So what do you think about Everton this season? Chairman. Everton is actually very, very sad. I think um, we said it many times when we reviewed and uh, scouted Everton games that, um, especially the game against Arsenal, that Everton just know how to do one thing, and that is is to defend. There is nothing up front for Everton, nothing up front at all. And sometimes you can't defend for ninety minutes. This the, the game of football is a game designed for you to win, so you can't keep um, defending. When you look at the uh, their form, is is really really poor for both teams actually. Because I've said it also many times, Bournemouth is not a very interesting team. Um, it's, it's not a very interesting team to watch. To mm-hmm. me, I don't, I don't like watching their games. And uh, so it's really, I think it's going to be a very, very poor match between Everton and Bournemouth because they have nothing to offer, both of them, honestly speaking. Okay. 
if I think they surprised me like this much, but judging by what you said, I think you, you're saying the food, you know, it's everything that you just, I feel like they, sh- they need to do more. Yeah, this season they have to do more. So, player, so yeah, the question is why I don't understand game. why they're playing that pattern and they're playing now. So to, uh, to deal with, what do you think about Bonnemouth season so far? Yeah, Bonnemouth not and they've not given me that vibes of premiership lately. Like their yeah, matches are always boring. They've I, I I don't even know what kind of style of play they do. So and Everton in the other side, Everton is not a stable team right now. Like they do defend a lot. I watch a match with that they defended all through and it was not good for them. Yeah. So still, I feel everything could come out of that game good. Okay. Yeah. Uh judging by the last five matches, we have um Everton winning just a game out of the last five meetings and Bonnemont winning four out of the five matches. Wow, that's impressive for Bonnemont. So judging by this, um Shegun, what should you say the outcome of the match on Saturday will be? I will go for a draw. Um, go less draw. I don't think they both lost their last match in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, Bournemouth lost to Arsenal. Why, as you said earlier, um, Everton lost to Luton Town for four clubs at this moment. So it's really, really a sad situation. I'll go for a zero zero um uh, draw. Okay. For both teams. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'll go for I'll go for Everton winning the match. Everton winning the match two wow. one. Everton winning the match two one. Okay, Everton winning the match two one. But I see for me, I see Bournemouth winning that match just by Lungo. Bournemouth winning one zero. Yeah, because I feel like Bournemouth can just you know do something and win the match. So the match, next match we're going to preview is Fulham versus Sheffield United, and that's going to take away a place at Craven Cottage. That's Fulham's own tough. Uh, Fulham, I don't know. Okay, Shelby, let me give you the say on this. What is, let me ask you about this. What do you feel about Sheffield United's season so far? I think for the three teams that has been promoted to the Premier League this season, I, I think it's not a secret that the, one, the team I really appreciate a bit um, it's Sheffield United. Um, but I think they were add done by the eight um, zero uh, loss. So I think yeah. that had a really dent on their season. Because when you look at the their last three games before that match against Tottenham, they lost by two goals to one yeah. against Everton. They drew that game two two yeah. against Man City, the Almighty Man City. They lost just go just two goals to to one. So they were like yeah. in a good progression, looking for a win. You know, we were expecting that these guys are going to get away very soon. Um, but to now lose that game eight zero was a really tough one. And last match they lost uh, to West Ham, so I think it's a very tough one for them. But I believe that they will pick up themselves sooner rather than later. Okay, so that's that's great. Yeah, that's great because you know you said that Sheffield can't come out good out of the three teams. You have to mention the team that will come out good out of the three teams. Yeah. It's going to be Sheffield yeah, United. Do that. Uh, so, uh, Deolu, what do you think about Fulham? Fulham has been in Premiership, you know, for some times now. What do you think about that season so far? Yeah, uh, Fulham having a good run so far. They won two matches out of the five they've played, the last five matches. So it's actually it's actually a good actually a good result for them. So they should they should pick up a fight against Sheffield United. Mm. Okay. Um going back to their last five meetings, uh Sheffield has won two out of the last five. Fulham won two and they drew one. I think that's shared they, they both shared it. Yeah, yeah cool. two wins. For Everton, for Fulham, sorry, two wins for Sheffield and a draw. So, what do you think the outcome is going to be, Shergo? For I, as I, I think we've said it many times here, for my own observation and the way I've scouted Fulham, I think Fulham has gone back two steps hmm. off of their performance of last season. Fulham was a tough team last season, but um, looking at this season, they're not really um, come up. So, I, I want to I want to go with my heart to say I'll, I'll go for a Sheffield win. I'll go for a narrow Sheffield win. Because I think Chelsea deserves a win. They deserve okay. a win. They've tried. I think uh, apart from the defeats as I mentioned against the Lucas, too, they've tried. So I'll go for a Chelsea win. So I'll be going for um, Fulham one, um, Chelsea two. Hmm. Okay, that's Craven Cottage. Yes, Craven Cottage and no Craven Cottage. Wow. No, be Craven Cottage where Chelsea um, beat uh, Fulham. That's just yeah. Chelsea good. Delu, okay. Let's see. What did she say? Yeah, yeah. Um, Sheffield is going to 
she was she was quietly looking for a win. So mm-hmm. it's not going to be an easy one for Fulham. Not going to be an easy one for them. And I think out of the three teams that got promoted to Premiership, Sheffield has been a brilliant team so far. Been a brilliant one. So I see a shocker from Sheffield. Mm. I see a shocker wow. from them. Or a 1 0 win from Sheffield. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's great. 1 0 2 1. Ah, I'm going for a draw for Sheffield and Fulham. I think 1 1. That's okay. That's okay. That should be your case for them. 1 1. So, next match that will be playing by 3 o'clock. Guess it that way. It's Manchester United versus Brentford at um, Old Trafford. Okay. Judging by the last games, uh, I know there's going to be some versions running around this preview of this match. So, Shegun, I'd like you to say a little bit about Manchester United season so far. What do you think it is up? What do you see the album, bro? Uh, and, uh, first of all, the both teams, Brentford and Manchester United, have also gone back two steps off of last season, as you said earlier concerning Fulham. They also have gone back two steps um, backward. So I don't think there's anything special about both teams. I think both teams, you, when you watch their game, they run. It's not as if they're not putting efforts, mm. but it's not clicking. So I, I think that's the problem. Like for Manchester United, in past years, it was always a question of no effort. But when you look at the game against Crystal Palace, I think the major reason why they lost that game was yes, Crystal Palace had a wonder goal that they scored from the you know the from the free kick or from the corner mm-hmm. that they scored and missed the ball. But it's United is not that team to that is an expert in breaking low blocks, and so it really, really affected. Uh, I think this game is going to be a very tough game because the way Manchester United wants to play and the weaknesses that occurs and shows in their game. Is one of the strong points of Brentford, so it's mm-hmm. going to be a very, very. I don't. I, I, I see it as a going, going very, very high intensity game that's between both teams, and I think there's only one definite winner in that match. Okay, that's 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 okay. Dilu, what do you think about Brentford season so far? Yeah, Brentford has always been um a hard one, like a very, really, really hard opponent for Manchester United past seasons. Like they, they are always picking up a fight with Manchester United. Whenever they are meeting Manchester United, it's like they are meeting a best team in the league. So, Bermot is not going to allow Manchester United to do much. Like they are going to make use of that of Manchester United weakness and get them. On that. Yeah. Okay, all right. By the head to head here, if not, uh, if not because of the um last season's first match of the season that uh, Bradford um, won Manchester United by four goals to new, where I just got the job. Uh, Manchester United has dominated more of their head to head matches in the last four matches that they played. Manchester United won three and they won just one, which was the four only last season. So, what do you think your prediction, your score prediction, what is it for going to be for? I think Bradford will score four goals in this game. I think before score for goals in this game, I think Manchester United's team is at this moment is very disjointed, very disjointed. But we'll never know. It's also dependent on the tactics, or not on the tactics particularly, but on the players that the manager chooses to use. But off of the squad and the lineup that they have has been implementing at Manchester United, if he use that same lineup, mm. I see a Brentford win at Old Trafford. And it's going to be an, a, a very, very pivotal moment in the Hag's career at Manchester United. In a sense, I see a Manchester United 1, Brentford 4. I, I, I see that the way Manchester United play and the way they try to attack on their high line, it's like two, two teams, you know, one in front. The attackers are always separated from the mm. defense. And we know one of Brentford's strengths is the counter attack. So and I think it's going to be, it's going, if Brentford can be clinical, which I expect will be clinical. I see Brentford winning that game four goes to one. Okay, four goes to one. Wow. Dilu, you know, yeah. what's your prediction? Uh, Manchester United has not been a stable team. The squad, everything, having so much, it's been complicated for them. So um, I see both teams scoring. I see both teams scoring, but Brentford winning the match. Three goes to one. Three goes to one. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's 
<laughs> that's amazing i'm surprising from coming from both of you um for me i'm not going to back down on manchester united um i know Manchester united we are going through a lot a lot so uh i'll go for a two to draw or we even Manchester united winning that match if we go for two to draw three, three to Manchester united is win. i know we are we are like our back now nah, nah, is that basket with the concede. So mm-hmm. I think go for three two. So Manchester United win that game three two. I'm sticking with Manchester United. So I'm sticking with them. We are winning three two. And the next match of the day is um Crystal Palace versus Nottingham Forest as uh, all spark. Um Crystal Palace, they put one off on Manchester United last week. So what do you think about Crystal Palace season so far? I think it's been a I mean, season. Uh, all credits to uh, Elksin. He, I think the game against Manchester United showed that he is really an old school manager. You know, he knows what to do to get a win. And most uh, modern managers need to understand the likes of the likes of the Zebi. They need to take a leaf out of the old school book, you know, mm. in the sense of it's not about, yes, you, you, you want to play good football 90% of the time. But there are some times where you have to be pragmatic, where you have to score one and lock shop and get your win. Three points is three points, irrespective of the way and the tactics and the pattern the pattern you play. So maybe cook who credits to them is just showing that he can do it not just only on a short term basis that he has been used for as, a, as an emergency option, mm. but also he can do it on, on, on the main on the main stage. So he's getting Chris Apala's bowling. So, but I think it's going to be a very tight game between them and Nottingham Forest. Okay, uh, Deolu, what do you think about Nottingham Forest? Season? I'm expecting nothing much from the two. But not, not too much from the two. Nottingham Forest still playing their game. Pakistan Star Palace trying to improve on the on their playing style and all. So I'm not I'm not expecting anything much from them. Not too much. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nothing much coming out from that match. Well, that's that's awesome. Um, the last set we had matches. Uh, Nottingham Forest has two wins against Crystal Palace in the last five matches, and the rest, the rest is what draws. They played three draws, and Nottingham Forest winning by two matches. So let me say, I think Nottingham Forest is leading, is leading that one. Um. It's, it's always a 12 matches. Look at me, you'll be like, just one go winning by a goal margin for them. You know, see, I'm even they want to win just by go margin. And remember, they are winning, they are winning on their own soil. They've never gone to the question that Crystal Palace to win. So, yeah, so, so, what do you think about that? It's going to be a very tough game. It's going to be a very tough, very, very tough game, very, very tight game. I don't think it's going to be a game full of goals. Like, I expect, as you said, based on the air to air or based on the other arms where it's from. I, I would go for because I, I feel Nottingham Forest has more of a well structured attacking play and they have players up front that can do one or two. So I would expect that uh, they should win that game um two one. So I think I'll go for Crystal Palace one because I always feel that when teams win at Old Trafford and they are like, oh, they are all fly and they're all happy, and people think they are very, very good. Most times it's not as if those teams are good, it's just that much United is very, very poor. Mm-hmm. So I expect Crystal Palace to come back to it in this next game and lose that uh, match against Nottingham Forest by them scoring one and Nottingham Forest scoring two. So one, two. Okay. Yeah, what do you think about the match? The prediction? What's your prediction? Yeah, let's go. Like I said, let's go. No much goals in the match. So I'm seeing a draw. A draw, a one-one draw from both sides. Like one-one draw. draw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've seen. I, I, I'll predict a draw too for both sides. A draw too, because Crystal Palace, like he said, to first my okay, Crystal Palace might want to back down, but I believe mean that they will not that they will not be like that fully overwhelmed with the result they got at Old Trafford. And no time coming for us coming to the game, they want to just you know do some magic. So let's just I I will give them a draw too. Maybe it's zero zero one one, but I just know it's a draw. The next match we're going to view is um, Brighton versus Liverpool. This one is a not a, 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 a on uh this is one is taking place on amex stadium at brighton which one is a tough one to crack because last season this same features when it happened it was total devour for liverpool brighton you know killing uh, liverpool on all sides both center forward back and center and everything Do you understand so what is your take on brighton season this it, so far because they've 
they've, they've not proved to be this battle of last season. So what do you think about that season so far? Uh, as you said, you are right when you say it has not been the brightness of last season. But also, I think I, I, in some sense, it has been the brightness of last season because uh, under the Zebi, they've always had these very good performances, not so good performances. Before you know, very good performances, not so good performances. They had it this season, you know, when they played, uh, I think they played West Ham, they lost. Even when they were the ones with the ball and everything, they lost. And then they had fantastic performance against Manchester United, you know, a tactical uh, lesson for Eric Tenag and the likes. So, and then from there, Aston Villa, the first of all, was Chelsea. I, from the game I saw against Ch Chelsea, because I watched that game against Chelsea in the Carabao Cup, and I said, this is not the bright thing. I know this is not the bright thing we saw against Manchester United. And I wasn't, it wasn't a surprise to me when they lost against Aston Villa. So, but I don't think they will regain themselves against Liverpool. I don't think they will regain against Liverpool. And then they go to square go because Liverpool has this tradition now of they will first allow you to square go. Once you square go, they will eventually come, come to win and they are mentally, mentality monsters. So, uh, but I think it will be a tough game, but I don't see Brighton winning that match at all. And, and the question I want to ask you is this is your first season as a uh, European, European uh, Cup competition. They lost their first match against AEK Athens at home. Do you think they can still move, do something on on the European competition? They can still, you know, they will settle, buckle up, and move forward. They can, but I, you know, there are some some lessons that Zebi needs to learn in the sense of I I don't like the way he's managing his squad. I think he, he from his own perspective, thinks he's doing it the right way. Mm. But I think I don't think I'm not to brighten in the last. Five, three of two games are fielded the same starting level. There's, there are always changes. The Zebi can use this lineup today, tomorrow, use this lineup. So we constant change, constant like thing clearing. And sometimes when you want to win games, when you want to go on run, you have to maintain the same lineup. Even the, the almighty Pep Guardiola maintains, sometimes maintains the same lineup at some moment. So he has to. So I, 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 I truly, I did not see you know, even in the Europe, Europe, if he doesn't maintain a fixed lineup, you understand, mm -hmm. and let that lineup be good at what he wants them to be good at perfectly, I don't think they will go far. Mm -hmm. So he needs to make sure this on how he manages manage his, his squad. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, that's great. Um, dear Lou, what do you think about Liverpool's season so far? You know, what do you think about their season? Brilliant season from them. The last um five games, they form brilliant from from Liverpool so far. I, I love I really love the way they play. Yeah, they play with their recent games. Okay. What do you like the last match the, the last match there was controversies, you know, with VR yeah. uh social against Tottenham. Um, they collected two red two red card and they see showed that even with the red card they played yeah. Yeah. beautiful football. That's that's why I said I love that game. The game they are play, they've been playing so far has been brilliant. They collected two red cards in that game. So record, yeah, but they didn't relent from playing Tottenham. Wow, oh, yeah, that's great. That's good. Okay, so um, the end to the last five meetings against uh, between Brighton and um, Liverpool, Brighton has won two, which is the last two they won last season. Um, they've played draw twice, and Liverpool has won one. The last five meetings, the end to end. So Brighton is leading that. Brighton two. Uh, Liverpool one and two draws. So, what's your prediction going to be like, Shagun, for this uh, match? I'll go for a Liverpool win. But I think Brighton will score one. Okay. And Brighton uh, have to score one because Liverpool allows everybody to score one against them. So, I would go for um, Brighton one, Liverpool four. Wow. Uh, Brighton one, Liverpool four. What about you, D? Yeah, it's a tradition for Brighton. Sorry, the tradition for Liverpool scoring them first. Now, I think it's part of their game. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I see both teams scoring. But Brighton scoring them first. And um, Liverpool having to win the match. So I see a 3-1 win for Liverpool. Okay, I'm predicting 3-1 win too for Liverpool. Because it's like that 3-1 now is on the... You don't stamp for that for Premiership. 3-1, 3-1. They just like <laughs> last four matches before Liverpool. They won 3-1, 3-1, 3-1, 3-1. So it's like... Something else. I think maybe they are trying to stick to that score line. So I predict me one too. So you understand. Um next match we're going to the um West Ham that's on Sunday. 
that's all for Saturday. The next match we're going to review is going to take place on Sunday. And the first match of Sunday is West Ham versus Newcastle United. West Ham United, uh, they're going to it's home. They are home on London Stadium. So uh, West Ham is is proving to be they're, they're getting getting themselves back. You know, Moyes, he's just the coach I like. So what do you think about West Ham? Let me know. Talk to you. What do you think about West Ham, Shego? What do you feel? And West Ham is, you know, the amazing, amazing transfer window, as you said, amazing num- number of players they have now, amazing quality of players they have now. Um, Moyes is trying, he's trying his best. He's trying his best to at least now to s- have a very good Premier League season. Yeah, there's still lots of things they can improve upon. There are lots of things they can, they can still get better at. But I, but I see they are, they are top, top team right now. Mm. Their last game against Sheffield, they, they won that game two goals to know so i expect it and the two games they've lost in their last five were against teams you would expect they will lose you know yeah. it's not there's not like a shock result you know they lost against um liverpool three goes to one and they lost against man city you know three three goes to three goes to one also so there are teams you expect them to lose so i think they are doing well Okay, uh, Dale, what do you think about Newcastle season? You know, they have the Champions League for the first time, you know, after like some years back. So, and they went, uh, to uh, they played against the similar way, but they got a draw. What do you think about that season so far? Has the Champions League been affecting them positively or giving them that morale booster? Or, I th- or what do you think is going on with that season this season? No, the, the Champions League hasn't been affecting them so far. Like I can see, they had a win against um, Man City in the Carabao Cup. I think that's that's a boost for them. That's a boost for them. Like they want to perform and their previous form has been good. So far it has been good. So they should pick up a fight against West Ham to give us something interesting to watch. Okay, that's great. That's great. So um head to head, yeah, the last five meetings we have Nick Castle winning twice. West Ham won once, and the rest we have two draws between them. Um, check one, the, the prediction. Uh, this is going to be tr- a little bit tricky. What do you think about this prediction to this match? Going to be very, very tricky in terms of sense of uh, you would expect maybe it can be a draw hmm. because if you look at based on off of quality, you know, as I said, the games you expect West Ham to win this season, they've won it. And the games they lost, they lost against Liverpool, lost against Man City. Mm. It's, it, these are matches you expect them, they are going to, to mm-hmm. lose. And yeah. uh, when you look at, uh, also Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle in their last five, they lo- they've also had two loss. So it's like they are both, you know, having their, those kind of equal stops. And when you look at the games they, they lost, they lost against Brighton, they lost against Liverpool. So these are also teams also that you can also see can beat them you get and their last three three um wins inclusive inclusive of the eight zero um, confidence boosting win against Shelf against Sheffield United these are teams that you would expect that they should you understand they should win so they already beginning to groom, groom themselves up in terms of their last three games they've had a clean sheet yeah so but when you look at West Ham and what West Ham has I think West Ham is going to is going to break that run of um, clean sheets um, so I think West Ham is going to score one but I, I will go for I'll go for a three one. So I'll go for West Ham one, um, Newcastle two, three. I don't think West Ham has the capa- it's my own opinion. I don't think West Ham have the capacity to withstand the kind of high pressure football that um, Newcastle will bring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. West Ham one, Newcastle three. Okay. 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 So Dilu, what's your expectation be? Yeah, we all know West Ham to be a calm team. They don't rush things. They calm the ball down, play their opponents very well. So, and we all, we know Newcastle, the fast, they're always fast. They make the run, attack fast, everything about them just fast. So, I feel um, West Ham would give them a tough time. They'll give them a tough time and I see West Ham winning the match. It's West Ham winning the match. Two goes to one. Wow. Yeah. West Ham winning two goes to one. Newcastle. Okay. I think I'm gonna change my I'm going to go and change my F here. So well um, West Ham against Newcastle. I see I think the, uh, for me there's gonna be goals in that match. I feel I, I'm having the feeling that goals are coming, you know, rain on that day. So I'm giving like three to favor West Ham because I want favor, I want West Ham to beat Newcastle. So I'm saying three to to West Ham. That's my prediction because West Ham 
they are getting their sale back and they are home too. So I feel like they should be able to win that match. Uh, the next match on Sunday they were going to preview is West Ham versus As. Uh, sorry, excuse me, Wolves versus Aston Villa, um, taking place at Mal- Mullinex Stadium. So, what's your take on? I'll allow you to talk on Aston Villa. Shagun. What's your take on Aston Villa? Expected, expected. What they are doing is expected. Yes, at the beginning of the season, you know, the first few games, it didn't really look like what we expected. You know, it didn't really like what we expected. But now it's beginning to look like Embry, Embry ball is is in play at Aston Villa. So it's expected amazing confidence boosting win against um, Brighton last time. Or Watkins doing amazing. You know, it's showing that under Embry is. A, he's a good player. Yeah. Everybody knows he's a good player. Mm-hmm. But under Emery, he's, he's, he's showing that he can go a higher, up, a higher up, you know, on that level. Under Emery, it's amazing for them. So I'm, I, I just expect that they keep doing what they are doing, you know, keep um, playing football, keep winning games, keep trying to, you know, to push forward. On. Uh, like um, writing, Aston Villa back on European core competition. So on the last, the first match, they lost to Lady also. What do you think? It's it's that they're not ready yet for European competition or what's going on? You know, it's not very it's not easy. You know, they're not used to that in recent years. They've not they're not used to going to the to to Europe, you know. Yeah. They've always been used to playing on the weekends and playing midweek if they are midweek games. So it for even for them and Brighton, it they will have to adapt to the demands of European football on on a t- on a Thursday. You know, they have to adapt to that. I think uh, looking at the second round of games will be coming up. You know, I expect that they should be able to, you know, get themselves up and up and going in their okay. European competitions. Okay, and they get up, they, get, they have to buckle up fast if they want to do so. Yeah. Um. So, um, Dilly, what do you think about Wolves' season so far? What's your take? Yeah, Wolves. <laughs> their previous matches, they've been unlucky. Like Wolves are always the always dominating the game, most games dominating all but the goals like that they are front line i don't know i don't know if they need to change their front line or improve in their front line they are always getting the goals but they had a win against the um, in their previous match well that should be a boost for them that should be a boost all right i uh, we should see something interesting from them so okay all right well the, uh something interesting about the last five match meetings what is that the uh, last five meetings as of not win any of the last five meetings, Wolves have won twice, uh, whether by the draw two twice. You yeah, yeah. understand? So it's this is kind of giving me, you know, feeling that something might happen that day that we might not want to see. So you know, understand? So what do you think about the what's your prediction going to be like? I think Asafola is going to win, and it's going to be, it's going to be a very very interesting match to watch. This game is a game I I employ fans to watch because both teams are not teams that want to defend. Yeah. Both teams are teams that want to play fo- football, and as Dolu said. Um, especially the game I knew, I knew that Wolves were very, very unlucky. And in some parts, also not very clinical. You know, we have to blame them in some parts. was the game against Liverpool. They had a lot of chances. And when you watch the game, you just feel that these guys will end up losing this match against Liverpool and they, mm-hmm. and they eventually lost. So I think this will be a, game, a match full of goals, but I think Emery is going to record another win. So I'll go for Wolves 1, um, Aston Villa 3. Wolves 1, Aston Villa 3. Uh, Dylan, what's your prediction? Yeah, um, Aston Villa is a calm team, and I love when team are calm and get their possession right and all. Like, um, Shagu said, no team is defending, I don't see any like that much of defense in the game. They are all coming out, making use of the chances they get. I see Aston Villa winning the game, so Aston Villa winning also. Okay. I see them winning, um, three goes to one. Aston Villa winning three goals to one, same as Shagun's prediction. But for me, I'll go for a two-two draw. I'll go for a two-two draw between them because I feel like we we'll always have much time to rest. You know, as of like we go to you know play European competition, so I feel like it's gonna take a little bit toll on Aston Villa, and Wolves will be like will be ready for them. You understand? So that's what I think about that. So I feel like two-two draw will be okay between them. And the last match of game week eight will be. A tough one. Uh, it's taking place at the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal versus Manchester City. Arsenal versus Manchester City. Shagun, I would like you to take your... Have your take on Arsenal. What do you think about Arsenal? 
Last night is Arsenal. Last night is doing well. Last night is, last night is what you expect. Um, fantastic win against um, Bournemouth in the last um, game week in week seven. Um, a loss in the Champions League, which sometimes it happens, you know. Sometimes it happens. And so, but Arsenal is Arsenal. Arsenal is showing that they at least are close to the level of last season. They, they are showing that um, they understand what they are doing. They have a game game plan, style of play. They are their style of play, playing good football. But this game against Manchester City for and for any team in the Premier League is always a game where you have to check yourself against the very best. Because Manchester City, the treble winners. Yeah. So I think it's a game where Arsenal has to evaluate themselves that are they up to that level? I don't think Mas- Ma- I don't think Manchester City is at their supreme level now. So I think it would be very good if Arsenal can get a win against this Manchester City team to give them that belief, you know, and to to take them forward in the in the couple of months oh, before the business end of the season. So it's going to be a tough one, but I, I see that Arsenal is doing well, and if they get a win, it could just help them. Okay, uh, Dilu, what do you think? What's your take on uh, the uh, Manchester City? What do you think it's going to be like the season so far? What do you think? Like they lost um against Wolves and lost against Newcastle uh and the Carabao Cup. So, you know, that's two losses back to back. And with um uh, Rodri not playing again and the uh, Dribble still out of the uh, of of the team, what do you think is gonna is gonna when it's gonna impact their season or what do you think their season is gonna be like coming forward? Yeah, losing um two great players like the absence of two great players that's Rodri and um De Bruyne um it's going to it's going to be like that's been affected them so far it's been affecting them so far there are two previous games they actually lost and um I think um I'll f- follow what um, Michelle said Arsenal should make advantage they should take advantage of this um their unstable situation right now so they can just get the win from the game mm. yeah you feel so okay well, let's wait and see let's wait and see what arsenal is going to do so um check what's your prediction going to be for arsenal versus manchester city it's going to be a very interesting match it's going to be a match where you want to look at how Ateta is going to set up against manchester city is he going to go for a single single pivot six is it going to be a, going to be a double pivot six is ours going to start you thought other guys start as a lone eight so a lot of questions is going to trust us going to start is Martinelli going to start? So there are a lot of questions you want to ask. Saka was um off injured in the Champions League game. So you want to see is he going to be fit for that match? These are determinants. So a lot of things. We know Rodri is not going to be there. I think it was a straight red card against yeah. um yeah. the last match that he, he that he played. So 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 you, a lot of things you want to ask. How does Guardiola, you know, solve that issue? You know, they've lost their last two games and you want to see how you can solve the issue. A lot of things but i i would say i i was always feeling that anytime the asna is in the emirates quite all right so it's going to be a very, very close game but you know whenever i want to predict and you have the treble winners in in, in question you just have to predict that they're going to win so i'll go for asna one take us now square going the emirates and um man city three well, i thought you were just saying that Arsenal should be able to do something Hey, they should be able to do something. I know to say they could do something. They should so you, you just, you just, if first raise their you own know, you cannot, you know, No, no, I, I, I hope know. they do something. No, I hope people. I hope Arsenal does something. I, I hope Arsenal does something. But you know, now first of all, even when I'm predicting now, I know first of all that Saka is not. It's like fifty no, percent. That's like that's, like, that's like one final loss, you know. So it's, and I and Arsenal's attacking play, you know, it's like. 70 percent saka it's coming from saka yeah so it's so there are a lot of issues so, is out i'm at is out also so it's just not going to play is ours going to play so there are a lot of questions i think it's, it's a game i think it's, it's, it's that's the only game this week this weekend that you cannot really see but a lot of things both of them have one or two um things that you like are they, are they going to solve it okay. but i will stick with my prediction that has now won um man city three oh uh Dilu, what's your prediction Dilu? Yeah, um, as now, Ateta meeting, um, Guardiola in the previous matches, as last season. I want to see, I want to see how well Ateta has learnt from the previous matches against Man City. So, um, I would, would, might see a shocker during the weekend. You might see a shocker from us now. Uh, and I predict, um, a 2 1 win from us now. Okay. All right. That's the, uh, preview and prediction for the, for my uh, game week eight. That's coming up 
this Saturday. Um, before we go, I would like for you. I would like to ask you guys a question. Out of the three teams that came from um, championship last season, what do you think is sane, and what do you think is probably going back to the Champions League? Uh, Delu, what do you think? What do you think is going to stay? What do you think is going to go back? Yeah, um, my favorite team, like I don't know, I won't say your favorite, but the one that has caught my eye is um Sheffield, Sheffield United. I think they are really a strong team. If they get their game, if they improve on their game towards the ending, like okay. the survival time of the of the um, Premiership. So um, I feel Sheffield is staying. Sheffield is staying. Um, Burnley should maybe struggle, struggle, but. I think they are going back to the championship, honestly. I think um I feel Burnley is going back to the championship and Luton City for sure is going back to the championship. <sighs> okay. All right. Uh Shego. The top four. What do you feel? What, like Jordan by let's say by this, what we've seen so far by the seven uh, game weeks we've seen. What's your take? Like, what do you think is gonna be in one to four? What's what's the order? I think what's the four is already fixed. I don't think it's going. I don't think it's going to change if, uh, to the end. Top four is already Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham. I don't think it's going to change because when you look at people that are not in that equation, Chelsea is not making top four. My United cannot make top four. Okay. Who again wants to make top four? Brighton, uh, Aston Villa. Aston Villa is going to be finished possibly fifth or sixth. No way. I don't okay. think there is there any other club I've not mentioned. I can finish no team. So That's I think guys, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham. Yeah, by the end of game week seven, we still had, we still have Ireland sitting at the top of goal scoring charts in the Premiership. Is he going to take it again? Is he going to to win the Golden Boots again? You should have always come more than that. I think, as you said, when you you miss De Bruyne in your team, so it affects you know the number of goals you scored. But hopefully. If the burner is back, I think he, he scores more goals. And he's a very, you know, he's a very, very reliable player in the sense of he was on the pitch, you can rely on him to give you a goal. Mm. So I think he, he at least can give you a goal, a match, one goal, one game. So I think if he goes on that, because when you look at the people that are also dragging for the good team, the likes of Son. Yeah, Son, Tottenham is a very good, in a very good, um, run at the moment, but you cannot expect Son to get goal every Tottenham game. Or well, Alan, you just expect it. So I think he will go, he will go with the golden boots again. This is it. Um, like you said, Son. Do you expect Son to be at sitting second in goal scoring charts by now? Looking at the performance of Tottenham, looking at the attackers of Tottenham, you know, the way they've performed, the matches they've won, someone has to score goals for them. Yeah. Which at least is not scoring goals for them. Abby? He does go like one goal of recent and like so. He's not scoring the number of goals you expect from them. Brendan Justin just came into the team recently. Kulishevsky is not really score. He's not. He's not scoring goals for them. Just, just doing his own basic work. So someone has to score for Tottenham for Tottenham to win those games. And who else than um, you mean Son? And also the partnership between Madison and Son is just helping him to keep banging goals. And if Madison is keeps fit, if Son keeps the form. And it's also fit. I expect that Son could also finish um, second on the Golden Boot um, ratings. All right, that's great. Um, the assist charts, you know, the assist charts we have. Um, by end of game seven, we have like four players sitting top with the same assists. We have Momo Salah by assisting f- um, with four assists, Madison four assists, Pedro Neto four assists, and uh. Kevin Trippier for assist instead of for leading the chart of assist board. So, uh, do you who do you think is going to you know come out as a top assister in the Premiership this season? Yeah, top assister. Like I'm seeing a lot from Madison so far. I think Madison is going to deliver. That's if he remains fit, like Shago said, if he remains fit, and if Son and other players remain fit, Madison should top the assist chart. Okay, but well, do you feel like? When the boom comes back, he's not going to just retain his rightful position. It depends on how many assists the sons will get before the Bruyne comes back. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But also, you know, the Bruyne is like the king of assists. So in one game, self, you can clear like half of one somebody's assist. Mm. So do, do you feel it's possible? Do you feel what Prowse might do something when it comes to assists? Like 
Be among the top charts. No, uh, no, but Prada takes the corner for West Ham. Yeah. So if you can take good corners for them and you can score from there, so assist ratings, assist ratings go up, and also the position he plays also assist ratings also can go up. So it's possible, it's possible. But for me, I think the assist for this season, I want to say to go to Salah. Uh, I, I think I think Salah will get the assist record. Okay.